Hello viewers, I welcome you all to my channel. Uh, in this video session, we are going to discuss about the OPAM parameters and we are also going to cross check them on the multi-sim software which is used to simulate the circuit. So let us first uh, try to understand what is input bias current. Now let me first draw a symbolic representation of an op-amp. So this arrowhead here will point towards the output. So this will be an output terminal. It has two input terminals, one with the negative marked, one with positive marked. The negative marked ter input terminal is an inverting input. The positive marked terminal is non-inverting input. It has two power supply pins plus VCC and minus V. Now practically speaking ideally zero current flows through the input terminals of an op-amp but practically there will be negligible amount of current flowing through the input terminals of an op-amp. And that is what we are going to even see based on the simulation. So what is IB1? IB1 here is the current flowing through the inverting terminal of an op-amp. IB2 is the current flowing through the non-inverting input terminal of an op-amp. So what is input bias current? So input bias current is nothing but an average. It is average of the input current flowing through op-amp. Okay, average of the input current flowing through the input terminals of an op-amp. So how do we find out is input bias current would be IB2 plus IB1 divided by 2. This is how we can find out the bias current. So just by adding both the currents and divided by 2 we would get it the average. So let us see the simulation of an input bias current. Now here you can see I've used an op-amp in an open loop configuration. I've connected two ammeters in series with both the input terminals. I have the resistors with the same value and I've connected a battery so that I could adjust any voltage what I want. But time being to make you understand about the bias currents, so I have made this voltage zero. So even if you don't use this battery, even if you directly connect it to ground, it would be still okay. I have used a multimeter to show you the output which is saturated voltage, 14 volt right now. If you check the current, so 54.52 nanoamperes of current is flowing through the non-inverting terminal. and 68.33 nanoampere of current is flowing through the inverting terminal because here you can see it is XMM that is digital multimeter number 3. So digital multimeter number 3 is connected to inverting terminal. So 68.33 nanoamperes of current is flowing through the inverting terminal here. So uh, here in this case to find out the average I would add both of them. So if I just skip the fractional part and if I just add the integer ones what I get is 54 plus 68 by 2. So this is what I get, right? If I just solve it an approximate way, so it would be somewhat 54 plus 68 by 2, right? So it would be around One twenty two by two, roughly sixty one. Fine. So here you can see <coughs> it would be sixty one nanoamperes. <coughs> so I have mentioned it over here fifty four point fifty two, sixty eight point thirty three, and this average is sixty one point forty three nanoamperes. The next, what we are going to 
understand here is about the input offset current input offset current okay so input offset current is actually the difference of the input current okay it is actually the difference of the input current so ib2 minus ib1 so let what is ib2 current flowing through the non inverting terminal so let us see what is it it is the 54.52 nano amperes minus 68 so 54 minus 68 so around 14 roughly say around 14 nano amperes of current that is minus 14 nano amperes okay so just a second okay So it's minus 13.81 nano amperes of current okay so this is the offset current it's very easy to measure now the next point what we are going to understand is about the common mode rejection ratio common mode rejection ratio fine cmrr common mode rejection ratio so it is the ratio of differential gain with the common mode gain this is one of the formula or either there is one more formula that I have written over here here you can see CMRR 20 log ok I would write it over here 20 log in the bracket it's a ratio of dv in or we can say delta delta v that is change in input with respect to change in output multiply by the gain of the circuit what i have designed so this is the formula we can prefer so right now if i just show you about this calculation so it would be 20 log change in input here you can see the change in input is 1 volt right 1 upon change in output here you can see <coughs> that is 19.83 milliamps minus 19 point sorry millivolt 19.83 millivolt minus 19.53 millivolt so it would be somewhat around 30 millivolt here as both the resistor are of same value so this would be 1 so 1 plus 1 will be 2 so this is how we can solve fine so once if we solve this we get the answer 76.47 decibels fine that is what i will show you here this is the circuit what i have used a simple differential amplifier where i have provided the input common to both fine so here you can see when I apply 4 volt I get 1.95 millivolt at the output but now if I change if I change it to 3 now you can see I would get 1.98 so 1.98 and 1.95 is what the two outputs we get so you can find out the CMRR next point is related to sleeve rate ok sleeve rate very important parameter very important parameter what is sleeve rate rate of change of output rate of change of output and it is usually measured in the units volt per microsecond so how can we find out so if what do I do is I would use the op-amp in open loop configuration I would use an op-amp in open loop configuration okay I would apply the input to any one of the two inputs I would get the output so whenever I'm going to use the op-amp in open loop configuration I'm going to get the output as square wave considering the output has saturated considering the output is saturated 
fine but this is the theoretical waveform how square waveform looks like but practically what happens is this is how we get the output wherein here you can see to change the output from high to low or low to high it takes some time right it will take some time and this is the delay time now this is what we are going to measure about how much time it took to change the output and what is the output it has been changed from that is from positive side to negative side okay so let us check here this is the circuit for sleeve rate same as i've already told you open loop configuration i've given the input to non inverting terminal and this is the output which is saturated and here you can see here you can see the output is changed from high state to low state right and here you can see at this point it's an high state so this is the point and here it has completely changed to low state so if you count the number of division it is um, two subscales <coughs> of <coughs> one single division so it's a two subscale small two subscales so that becomes 0.4 so 0.4 into time that is 200 microsecond so if you just calculate it it would be somewhat 80 microsecond okay 80 microsecond right so that is what i have noted sleeve rate 80 microsecond output okay here you can see the output let us count the vertical i mean the number of division covered in y axis so this is a reference axis so division 1 division 2 and almost division 3 but a one subscale less so this is one division two division and this becomes 0.8 so overall it becomes 2.8 division and the volt per division is 10 volt so 2.8 into 10 it becomes 28 volt okay so change in voltage is 28 volt so here you can see output is changed by 28 volt so if i just simply divide this 28 by 80 so i would get 0.35 answer which is volt per microsecond so this is how we can find out the sleeve rate of an operational amplifier so we have understood how to measure the bias current and offset current at the same time the cmr that is common mode rejection ratio and sleeve rate so sleeve rate helps us to understand how fast the op amp changes the output so this looking to this answer you can see the op amp output will be changed by 0.35 volt per microsecond so if this value becomes more and more that is 0.5 or say 1 or 2 or 3 anything so that would be better okay so i hope you got the point so these are these were the few parameters uh, what i have tried to explain you here on the simulation software that is multisim so i hope you have understood so i request you to build and test if you have any further queries can post your comment or question in the comment section of this video i would definitely try to answer it thank you